Speaker, I'm pleased to rise in support of the uh, resolution by the member from Wellington Halton Hills on this very important uh, uh, topic. And I think, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, to start with, I think the, uh, the local paper um, um, from the um, member from Wellington Halton Hills says it best in the headline in their uh, editorial in support of this resolution, writes that it's a cost-effective, humane solution. And, and I think that's, that's very important to recognize in this debate, that the, um, it's, a, um, it's a solution that needs solving. And I think everyone in this House um, and everyone in attendance here would, would recognize that this is a problem that needs to be dealt with. And I don't think it's um, uh, the word humane uh, at first blush says, well, maybe that's not quite the way we wanted to uh, express it. But I don't think it's humane to have someone needing attention and expecting that the wait list for that attention in our health care system should be between four and ten years. I think it's a, um, um, it goes without saying that it's, it's, um, it seems a kind of odd that we would even need to have a resolution that says that we want this added to a provincial government's wait time strategy. One would think it would be automatic, that a strat the strategy would be in place to reduce that wait time um, well below the four years as opposed to from four to ten years. It seems uh, uh, totally un unreasonable to do that. The other part, of course, is, is the, um, uh, the, the fiscally prudent, I think the Minister of Finance would use, but the, uh, to provide individually based funding, I think it's so important because that is the most prudent way to deal with this situation. Not only is it the best way for the individual, but it's also the best way to provide services to um, that people can purchase their services and provide services they need in the way that they want them delivered. So um, I think self-directed funding is the only way to go at, at times like this. And, and I think there's a lot of um, um, case to be made for that. And I just wanted to very quickly point out, uh, um, at this, before this debate, I had the member from uh, Wellington Halton Hills give me some information. And he gave me uh, the um, uh, brochure from the Ontario Community Support Association. And it has a number, uh, a lot of information in it about the self-directed funding, but it has a number of case studies. And I just wanted to, for the record, point out uh, one in particular. In 2004, Don entered hospital with complications arising from his earlier spinal cord injury that resulted in quadriplegic, quadriplegia. He has been ready for discharge since March 2005, yet living in a hospital for over three years because he is on a lengthy wait list for self-managed attendant service direct funding in his home. The cost per day for Don to be in the hospital is $1,200 a day or $438,000 a year, almost a half a million dollars a year. Don is extremely frustrated because he knows he could be in his own home with the right services he needs at a cost of about $200 a day, six hours of service during the day and attendant available overnight. The hospital bed could be freed up to reduce the wait list for surgeries and Don would have been independent in his own home. The additional cost to taxpayers to date as a result of Don not being able to assess the right service in the right place at the right time has been over $1.3 million over three years. The additional inappropriate hospital cost could have been provided attendant services to 12 more people per year. It seems rather silly that we're say, sitting here today debating this resolution. I very much appreciate it coming forward, but we're debating the resolution whether the government should be moving ahead to provide more in attendant care in the home. Um, because it may be costly. This would tell me that there are a lot more people, and the, and the brochure refers to that, there are a lot more people that um, um, could provide that savings to provide more attended care for people in the home. So uh, that, I think, deals with the, um, uh, with, with the money part of the, the resolution, and I, and I support him for bringing it forward. As the member from uh, Wellington Halton Hills uh, pointed out, we all, I think, uh, received um, people coming into our office to talk about the, uh, uh, the problem with um, not a sufficient attendant care in the home. Um, and uh, I, uh, I too have had those in. I have a number of people here that, uh, that I just wanted to refer to. Jean McLeod, who does have attendant care in the home, but she wants to have self-directed funding because the, the, um, she has cerebral palsy, has had for quite a number of years, and she believes and she um, knows that she can provide more and better care if she can direct it where and when she wants it as opposed to uh, uh, the way it's presently being provided. Yet because of the structure and no uh, great incentive or initiative on behalf of government to change the system so she can have self-directed, um, she is, uh, uh, has waited for over two years for approval to get the same funding, less cost, provided to her in her home. The Chesney family have a very um, disabled uh, and, and, and needy son 
uh, uh, who lives um, not too far away from uh, the um, riding of Wellington uh, uh, Halton Hills. And they have a son, Brock. And he is now 21, and they no longer can care for him uh, by themselves without some help uh, within their home. Yet, because of the waiting list for funding, uh, they can't get that help. Now, the end result will be that he'll have to be put, uh, uh, or he will have to find a, a group home to be in where he doesn't want to be, and uh, there will be nobody there to uh, look after him. And I just want um, to close, Mr. Speaker. I notice my time's gone. I, want, I got a number of letters from people who made presentations to Bill 77 objecting to spending more money on, demo on uh, bureaucracy and less money on frontline care. And one of the uh, family uh, members wrote, staying in a family environment is very important to any handicapped child or adult. And I would not want to resort to putting these children in government-run group homes. My whole life revolves around these handicapped children, and I also do relief for three mentally, uh, medically involved children. This is a lady, Mr. Speaker, that has seven developmental um, uh, challenged um, uh, children living in her home, and that's the way she feels about keeping in the home and getting the attendant care that this member is talking about, and I wholeheartedly support it.